because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Coop and Cassius for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Can you answer in Welsh, please? How are you, Edward? I'm very well, boy -o. thank you. Is that right? That's actually pretty good. Wasn't specific Welsh, but yeah. Uh, looking forward to going back to Cardiff. Um, I'm going. I like, you know, as a promoter, you try and stay a little bit impartial. Not Obviously, not, not impartial because Joe Caldina is our fighter. But I reckon Joe Caldina is going to knock Rakimov spark out on Saturday. And I think there's going to be unbelievable scenes. We've got like less than 100 tickets left. It's going to be completely sold out. It's a really good fight against Rakimov. But I really believe, and I told Freddie Roach last time, because we had a little bit of beef, me and Freddie, in the ring. Joe Caldine is going to knock Rakimov out and he's going to do it in unbelievable style. And he's going to go and win every belt in the division. Stick that in your Welsh pipe and smoke it. Let's go, champ. Right, let's just uh, backtrack a little bit because um, after the situation uh, that occurred after Caldina winning the original world title... Uh, against Sagawa. Joe Cordina wasn't happy for a while because of that kind of situation with, with the IBF. You know, you've explained that situation, but uh, you always said that you would deliver him that opportunity to regain his belt, which is what you're doing. So that's in the past. Moving forward now, everything's all good. Yeah, I mean, Joe was unlucky, but honestly, I think governing bodies sometimes make harsh decisions. That was harsh but fair. When... I'm going back over it now, but when Joe got his shot against Agawa, Rakimov was the mandatory, and we managed to get that exemption for that fight, but the ruling was Joe must fight him within 90 days. Joe won the title, had a small hand injury after, because he went back to training after that fight, and then um, couldn't fight Rakimov within the 90 days. We went to the IBF, we got a small extension, which they allowed, thankfully, and but said, this is the final extension. If Joe Caldina doesn't make this fight day, Rakimov must fight for the title. Joe broke his hand. All of a sudden, he's out for, what, five or six months. It was impossible to keep the belt. Sometimes you can make an interim championship, but the rules of the exception clearly stated that ultimately he could not ask for an exception beyond that date. He lost his title. Harsh. Rakimov, then we signed to fight Zelfa Barrett, which was great, with both fighters signing to fight Joe Caldina. So... Bit harsh on Joe, great bit of business from us because all of a sudden now Joe sits with a chance to become a two time world champion. The profile even bigger if he wins on Saturday. The only downside is obviously Shakur Stevenson's move to lightweight. So Joe, but Joe now has maybe an easier opportunity to make unification should he win, and I believe he will. So it's all worked out well. Rakimov's a good fighter, it's a tremendous fight and a, a great card in Cardiff as well. Let's talk about the card. From what I can see, there's only been one kind of notable change on the top end of the card, and that's a change of opponent for Zelfa Barrett, who's meant to be facing Alex Dill McCarney. Um Yeah, just explain that situation. Yeah, um, Dill Mahani was coming back from illness and probably took the fight a little bit too early, but apparently it wasn't related to that. But took the fight, broke down in camp, and wasn't able to make the fight. He now fights Sanchez, which is a good fight. Former world title challenger as well. And we want Zelfa to fight Joe Caldina if Joe wins on Saturday. If, you know, if, if he goes for a voluntary, I think Zelfa is a, a good opponent for that. Obviously, it would be Wales against England. Um, so, good fight for Zelfa Barrett. Sandy Ryan goes for the world title championship. I was going to talk about this after the fight, but I think I'll do it now because I think it adds a little bit more spice. Jessica McCaskill who has a mandatory against her bars in, which will be in June, has already agreed and signed to fight Sandy Ryan for the undisputed championship if she wins on Saturday. So Sandy Ryan will not only be fighting to win the world title on Saturday, but she will be fighting for a shot at the undisputed welterweight world championships. Again, great bit of business for everybody involved. Just makes that fight on Saturday, you know, and one thing, you know, I've said it before during interviews, I love the way Sandy has gone about her work. And she may not 
had the biggest profile of the female fighters for the reason of, after that defeat, she took herself away. She locked herself away. She came off social media. She got a huge amount of stick. And she basically turned her whole career around. And I love that because Sandy Ryan's career could have gone off a cliff after that defeat to Farias. And what she did was she came back better, stronger. And look at the way, you know, a great example to young fighters who suffer a defeat early in her career. She's always stepped up and she does it again on Saturday night and a chance for her to become world champion, which will be fantastic. Um, brilliant fight, rematch for the British and Commonwealth lightweight titles. Gavin Gwynn against Craig Woodruff last September was one of the fights of the year. Obviously two Welsh boys, huge crowd for them as well. Great cruiserweight fight. Jordan Thompson against Luke Watkins. You know, Jordan's looking at those big domestic fights now as well. Um, great card. Sky Nicholson on before the bell as well. Um, and a lot of Welsh talent as well. Great card. Really looking forward to it. Um, OK, so Roland Wells, and you're doing the 5K run as well this week. We're doing the workout in the shopping centre on Wednesday. The weigh-in at the... Uh, the City Council Hall on Friday, the Fight Day 5K. This Fight Day 5K is flying now. It's getting, I want to see you out, boy, as well. 10 a.m., follow all the details on social. And uh, looking forward to it, looking forward to a big night in Wales. And, of course, let's be honest, Saturday night. I mean, I can't take the credit for Tank against Garcia. Should do, really. I, mean, I suppose somehow I helped. Um, that fight is on the zone. Um as part of your subscription in the UK. So on Saturday night, you have an unbelievable card from Wales, Cordina against Rakimov, and then you roll into Tank against Garcia. If you are a UK subscriber, congratulations, because it's all part of your subscription, no pay-per-view, and uh, enjoy a great night of boxing. And someone said it's on Channel 14 on Sky, is that true? What, the zone's on Sky? Shut up, you're having a bubble, aren't you? No, yeah, um, the zone is on Sky. Okay, Edward, a few bits to get through. Um, I need to ask you about this. What about that? This Twitter rumour that kind of went around social media a week ago about Anthony Joshua allegedly... Mm. I know this is all bollocks and I know right. like we've spoken, right. but yeah, had failed a, a, a drug test, yeah. To be honest with you, it's absolutely frightening that some random account can just post some absolute bollocks. And then before you know it, loads of people are talking about it. Before you know it, I'm getting calls from journos, good journos, respected journos, saying, oh, I have to ask you, I saw this account said. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Well, anyway, but listen, people have to do their work. Of course, absolute total bollocks. And it's absolutely, you know, I've kind of come to the, and especially following on from the Joyce fight on Saturday and what I was listening to last week, I just think, if I'm Anthony Joshua, I just think, I, I wouldn't, I, I can't believe that he even gives people the time, his time, the way he does, because it would put me off so much enjoying what I do. You know, I get, I get it a lot as well, but not his level. I mean, that was, you see that and you just think, what the fuck is people, like, People are so desperate to bring you down. And I know it's easy to say, if you're at the top, people will always be desperate to bring you down. And that's part of life. And that is true. But how fucking sad is that? How sad is it that people don't want to see people do well? How sad is it that people don't want to acknowledge people's success? People who succeed, people who achieve, have made sacrifices throughout their life in many different ways. But yet people aren't prepared to acknowledge the sacrifices that someone's made to get there and are more hell-bent on just bringing them down. And, like, Twitter's a fucking cesspit, to be honest with you. And it baffles me. I mean, I even see... I mean, I'm, I'm right in the deep end of stuff, but I see stuff you get, yeah? I see stuff Parsons gets. I see stuff big Johnny Fisher gets. And I just think... But there's no point slamming these trolls and, like, they're just fucking complete losers, Losers. You know the story. My phone number sometimes goes around on Twitter, right? 
I've got people who phone me up all the time, like just fans who are just doing nothing with their lives and just sitting at home all day. Say what? What? What do they say to you? I, I don't normally pick them up, but there's one guy, he's probably watching this, he phones me about 400 times a week on a private number, and every now and again, I'll pick it up. And he'll go, Hey there, what, how are you, what are you doing? And I go, and I actually have a conversation with him. And I say to him, what the fuck are you doing? And he goes, what do you mean? And I went, you, how many times you phoned me today? Well, I don't know, could be literally like over the course of a couple of hours, 30, 40. I said, what are you doing with your life? And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, like literally, the highlight of your day is sitting there, phoning me, seeing if I'll pick up or not. And even when I do pick up, I'm just going to tell you how it is and you ain't going to enjoy the conversation. And he's like, I said, do you work? Oh, no, no, but not at the moment. I said, what the fuck are you doing? Get out there and fucking sort your life out. Change your life. I mean, some, like, Twitter has enabled people to have a life, right? And some people with no ambition, no personality and no ability to communicate and actually try and achieve something with their life. Twitter has become their achievement. Literally to the point where it's like, I'm going to post, right? I'm going to see how many retweets I'm going to get. I'm going to make something up. I'm gonna, and, then, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get four or five of my mates, right? Who are probably just people from the industry anyway, and see how many... Yeah. And, and literally, like, every post, and then you, you block one, and it's like, <laughs> he's blocked me. Couldn't handle the heat. It's like, fuck me. Are you serious? Sorry about swearing. But it just drives me mad. And I see it on AJ, and I just think it's sad. Because these are the kind of people... It's even... Watching the show on Saturday, I quite enjoyed looking at it from the outside. And opinions on boxing... And I, Listen, one of the reasons that boxing is so topical and, and so well discussed is because of opinions. But then I watch the build-up last week as an outsider, as a fan, if you like. And I enjoyed the fight on Saturday. I really did. You know, I watched the whole card... And I just looked at people's opinions before the fight, people's opinions previously about Zhang and stuff like that. Then I looked at all the opinions after the fight. I just think, what a mad world that we live in. And then I look at the disrespect to AJ. And there'll be people watching, oh, disrespect. Mate. But <laughs> anyway, but yeah. Well, in, well, in answer to your question, yeah. total. And I, I had one of the journalists said to me, could you comment on this? I went, fucking commenting on Twitter rumours. No. I said, do your own research, but let me tell you now. You know. Like, anyway, and then. What did Joshua say about this? I'm assuming you've had some sort of. didn't even raise a fucking eyebrow. Didn't even, never mentioned it to me. Didn't even, just, probably just went, like, the most tested athlete in boxing. Constantly. Anyway, but then Varda came out and said, uh, Varda came out and said, Everyone passed. Uh, oh yeah, but what about UCAD? What UCAD that took 14 months to announce a decision and nine months apparently to alert the fire? Oh yeah, we'd find out from that three weeks later, wouldn't we? Like it's just fucking ridiculous. No. Okay, okay. Um, right, let's talk about more rumours in the world of boxing. Right, before I talk about this next rumour, I do want to kind of add a little bit more to it, which I've learned about today actually. So Simon Jordan comes out on talk sport last week mm -hmm. and talks about this is kind of coincided with Joshua's post he put out about him not fighting till December which we'll come on to um, Simon Jordan has put out the idea due to his sources that about this kind of tournament style going on potentially in December in Saudi Arabia between AJ and Wilder and, and Fury and Usyk Malik Scott has done an interview with IFL today which will be out actually by now by the time this goes out he said that there is truth amongst those rumours from, from Wilder's side that there has been discussions. So can you make comment on that rumour that Simon Jordan put out last week? Uh, yeah, only that. There's been no negotiations for that fight. There's been a mention of it in terms of that's something we'd like to look at. For AJ, one thing's for sure, his big fight and it will come in the Middle East, will be in December. And that will be Tyson Fury or Deontay Wilder. That's what we're planning. I will be going out next week to meet people to discuss AJ's fight in December. 
Um, there is definitely conversations that have taken place of just of, of plans where people would like to host Fury against Usyk and AJ against Wilder on the same night. It's going to cost a lot of money, but would be epic. And we will have those conversations. I'll wrap in the July situation now. Our focus is to get that mega fight in December over the line. There is no official decision in terms of whether AJ would fight in July. Some of that may come around the deal or the decision or the completion of that fight in December. I would quite like to see him fight. I think he would like to fight in December, uh, sorry, in July. But right now, he's not in camp for a July fight. We're focusing on getting the December fight over the line, which is a fight of huge proportion. And then we will make a decision on the July fight in the coming weeks. Eddie, why would Anthony Joshua, and I'm assuming you knew that this post was going to go, uh, put out such a kind of, which is something that's going to be talked about, if he's saying he's not fighting in, in, until December off the back of the fight on the 1st of April. Why even put that out then if there's a, a small possibility that he could still feature uh, or fight again in July? Imagine a heavyweight or a fighter putting something out that, you know, might get people talking. It would be bizarre. But I think that people who will be involved in the December fight will not want him to fight in July. Because, obviously, it's a fight of such huge proportion that you just wouldn't want to take the risk of committing that money with the possibility of defeat, injury, whatever it could be. AJ, as always, will be the one that makes the decision about his schedule. For me, going into a Fury fight, going into a Wilder fight, I would like him to fight in July. And I think he would, and I think Derek would. But we have to have those conversations read the December fight next week, and then we'll make a decision. So, in answer to my question about the rumours, there are elements of what Simon Jordan said that have been discussed, not by all means over the yeah, line, no, I think. No, 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 but no negotiations. There's some, there's there some truth, yeah. There is definitely some appetite from the Middle East to stage that event. Of course, there will. I mean, it's a huge, huge event, but it's going to take four fighters to commit to that. It's going to take four separate deals to take place. But if the money's right, I'm sure it can happen. It's mad, isn't it? Because on a single night, no one's been able to kind of pull one of these fights off. Mm. But you never know. At the end of the day, and people don't always like money being discussed in boxing, if the money's right, it will happen. It's just how it is. Because some people will want to be will want those fights, and some people won't want those fights. But always, everyone has a price. Tyson Fury does not want to fight Usyk, but for a price, he will fight Usyk. Do you anticipate that Tyson Fury? This talk about Ruiz or. I mean, Zhang put himself in the mix. We'll talk about that in a second. But do you expect Tyson Fury to fight and also Alexander Usyk to fight prior to December? Yes. I think Usyk has to. Um, and I think Fury will want to. And AJ will want to. But again, it all depends on the deal. I can't see... Don't forget, AJ just boxed in April. Fury hasn't boxed since December. He, he won't wait a year before he fights Alexander Usyk or AJ. So yeah, I mean, I think July 22nd is Fury's date they're talking about. And we'd go a similar time, to be honest with you. Um, it's just who? Fury's not gonna get a lot of money for a July fight. And if he's got that locked in for December, he's not gonna take a risk. So he's not gonna fight, you know, a lot of those guys because of what's on the line in December. Understandable. For someone who could be a potential opponent for Joshua in July, is it somebody along the lines of who you were looking at prior to Franklin? Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. it's not going to be a Dillian White, though, is it? Right. What? I think, I think Dillian White could be a fight. I mean, he, 
I saw him in an interview, you know, he called out Joe Joyce before he got beat. So obviously that fight's dead. But AJ White is still, for me, I mean, it's a risky fight, but it's a great fight. Um, in lines of what you're talking about, though, if, like, obviously the people you're negotiating a potential fight with in December don't want him to have a fight because of that reason, yeah, wouldn't Dillian that's White be considered too much that, of a risk? To AJ. Yeah. When someone says you're not allowed to have a fight, it doesn't mean you accept that, you know? So we have to see how those discussions... Look, the, the, the key for us is to lock, lock in the mega fight for Anthony Joshua. So everything will stem off that. Not ruling out a July fight at all, but we'll see how those conversations go next week. Just off the top of your head, you're probably not going to answer this, right? But I will. I bet you won't. See that night, potentially, that could take place. Let's just say, yeah. let's talk fantasy boxing for a second, yeah? Those two fights wound up on the same night in the Middle East, yeah? How much is that night worth? What, in terms of the fighter purses? Yeah, fighter purses. What could it be up to? I won't clickbait you on this, just you're educated. Could it be up to $400 million? $400 million? But I mean, it depends how the deal's done. You're going to have 10% of that? Fucking hell, mate. I'm joking. That was a joke. Uh, but it could be up to that sort of, those figures, 400 mil. It's going to take a huge amount of money. But it will be an event that no one has ever seen before and will never see again. So we'll have to see. OK, let's roll back to uh, Saturday night. It's so good that you admit that you watch other cards. Well, and different. Well, look, no, you, before you no, no, but if say you did. Don't forget, I represented Zhang for one, two, three, four, five, six fights, seven fights. So, and I like watching Joe Joyce. I don't mind. But if it's a fight that I'm not really bothered about, I'll catch up on it. But I watched that fight live. Um, Derek Chisora is calling you. I'm not answering it. Shall I answer it? Go on then. All right, Derek, I'm just doing an interview at the moment, mate. I'm interviewing Eddie. Do you want me to put it on loudspeaker? You're yeah, not. It's the Zang fight. Oh, wait there. Right, Derek, you're on IFL TV. You've got Eddie Hearn here. Eddie. You ready You ready for the Chinese power? Oh, give me that Chinese power, please. I'm begging you. <laughs> I told you that was a good fight for you a year ago. Yeah, but I wanted a year ago, but you were not paying enough what I wanted for it. But I want it now. I really want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. <laughs> Do you think Joe Joyce should take the rematch? Uh, depends with his eye. It'll be the outcome will be the same again, I mm. think, because he don't move his head. So who knows? Mm. We never know. We never know with boxing. But try and get it for me. Let's go to my cow for it, please. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, Derek. We'll talk. We'll talk numbers after. Speak to you in a bit. Yeah. <laughs> he texted me last night. Oh. He texted me saying like, "Hey." Bruv. And I was like, Zhang, question mark. He goes, how did you know? <laughs> I was like, you weren't going to text me any other reason. Um, so, yeah, Joe Joyce. Yeah. yeah. Um, how do I put this without people thinking I'm being bitter or whatever? Last week, Joe Joyce, I mean, I don't like the way Joe's been talking about AJ. And that's just me being, call me what you want, an AJ fanboy. And last week, the whole topic of conversation was about Anthony Joshua, right? He's, he's finished, he's a, you know, he's a shot fighter, he's this, he's that. And what happened was, I mean, if you want to be super harsh, the reality is Joe Joyce has never boxed an elite heavyweight, Okay. Zile Zhang is not an elite heavyweight, right? Joe, forget came in light, forget all this bollocks. He wasn't good enough to deal with Zile Zhang. When you sell your attributes on the basis of, I'm really good because you can hit me as hard as you like and I just keep on coming. 
that is not the recipe for longevity in a career, or in my opinion, the kind of career that necessarily you want in boxing. He gets hit by absolutely everything, Joe Joyce. And sooner or later, at 36, is he now? 37. You just... Like, the, I would understand if Joe Joyce retired from boxing. He's taken, over the years... Don't forget how many amateur fights. One of the best amateurs we've had. He's taken unbelievable punishment in sparring, in amateur tournaments, even in the professional code. And it was really uncomfortable watching that on Saturday. Like, and I think Joe Joyce is great. I really like, I tuned in to watch him. But if you can't beat Zile Zang, you have absolutely no chance to win a world heavyweight title. No chance. And let me tell you, if Alexander Usyk would have boxed Joe Joyce on Saturday night, it would have been one of the greatest mismatches of all time. I'm sorry, it would have. Would have been so unco If Zile Zhang is doing that to him, Alexander Usyk would have absolutely peppered him. And you can say he doesn't punch as hard as Zhang. Trust me, he would have hit him with five or six shots that he wouldn't have even seen coming, pivoting around him, going everywhere. So the reality is, is Joe Joyce is not an elite heavyweight. And you can talk about, oh, he'd, he'd steamroll Anthony Joyce. Mate, just you know speed of AJ compared to Zhang. AJ would ping him absolutely everywhere. But that's irrelevant now anyway. Good fight. Please for Zhang. A nice, nice guy. He's 40 years old, nearly. Can whack a bit with a backhand. Um, I felt like Joe actually was just like probably two rounds away from getting Zhang to actually start gassing. But he just took too much punishment. And um, yeah, I don't know. Do you I can't, can't criticise Joe because I, really, I think he's a nice chap. But I've not really got or understood the constant call-outs for Anthony Joshua. And he's this, he's that. I'd, I'd beat him and Franklin in the same night. I'd do this, I'd do that. It's not really Joe. And they got found out. That's what, that's what they got. His best win before was Joseph Parker. And Joseph Parker is well past his best. Another lovely bloke. Du Bois. Mate, watch. Du Bois got outboxed by Joe Joyce. I mean, but Joe has got a massive decision now. Massive decision. Because if he doesn't rematch Zhang, he should retire. And I didn't like what I was hearing, which was the interviews where he said, maybe I'll have one first and then I'll go back into it. You know when AJ got dropped about six times against Andy Rees? You know what he said in the fight after? In the interview? In the change room? Fucking, I am not taking one other fight than rematching Andy Rees. Do you know how many people said to me, you're mad fighting Andy Rees again. He'll stop him again. He'll, his career will be over, right? You, you, in the interview after the ring, in the changing room, at the press conference, at his place in New York the next day. Ed, I would rather quit boxing than not fight Andy Ruiz again. I am not taking any other fight than that rematch. Not, oh, maybe I'll have a little fight in the middle. Didn't like what I was hearing. You rematch Zhang or you retire, basically. Because you're 37. What are you going to do? Have a, come, a 10 rounder in November and then, uh, and then get to 38 and 39. You rematch. If you can't beat Zhang, you ain't winning a world title. No way. And now, it's like Zhang is the new powerhouse of heavyweight boxing. This is what I'm talking about, people. He's a good fight. He's a lump. But he gets dis like wilder, destroys him. Tyson Fury destroys Zhang. AJ destroys Zhang. We'd take that fight. We I mean, don't want a southpaw, but I'm telling you, we looked at that fight. And when we looked at that fight, I mentioned Zhang in all the interviews and people were saying, what a joke, Zhang, 40 years old. Oh, he gassed what out. What about What do you mean? Well, Chisora just obviously fancies yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Look, uh, Queensbury will have, we did the deal with George yeah. for that fight, and now Queensbury have the rematch clause and options on Zhang. So, but if I'm Joe Joyce, I'm phoning up Queensbury this morning and I'm saying, give me that rematch now. Luckily, thank God, no damage to the eye, just bruising. And Joe, it's a good fight. It was a really good fight. And I like, I think Joe Joy's got plenty of heart. But he just can't deal with elite heavy. I mean, and people talk about the speed of Zhang. He ain't, quite, he ain't fast. 
get in there with AJ, get in there with Wilder, even Fury, and see what fast is like. And this is what I keep, and Usyk particularly, this is what I keep saying. There are four elite heavyweights in the world. Anthony Joshua, Alexander Usyk, Deontay Wilder, and Tyson Fury. And then there's the rest, who are world-class heavyweights. That's my opinion. And Joe Joyce has never been in that elite list. Never. You guys look at the situations he's been in, the size of the fights he's been in, the opponents he's faced, and you make decisions that he could steamroll everybody. It doesn't work like that. So... The rematch is a great fight. I hope they make it. And if I'm Joe Joyce, it's the only fight. Can he win it? Yeah, I think he can. Will he win it? Maybe not. But at the end of the day, well, you've just lost your position. Last week, Joe Joyce was saying, AJ needs me. He needs me because I've got the interim world title. I mean, it's the most bizarre comments I've ever heard, but whatever. Now Zhang's got the interim world title and he's mandatory for Usyk. So Joe's got to go out there and beat him, win that title back and hope he does. But it's just, listen, we, I, I remember going into that Ruiz fight, all we were talking about. And sometimes you, you get asked a question, so Joe has to comment on it, but all people were talking about was, was Wilder, remember? With AJ. Well, we, we, he went in and did an ESPN interview and it was just, the whole interview was about Wilder and he was fighting Ruiz in three days. This is what happens when you start getting ahead of yourself and, and lose focus. And um, congratulations to Zhang. And they've got a nice group of managers, the lanes, like, I'm pleased for him, you know. But he's just not, it's only my opinion, I'm not slagging in on off. He ain't elite. He can whack and he's a lump. But he ain't elite. Dillian White, as you mentioned, was present at the fight night, um, listing before the fight, Joe Joyce's. Uh, one of the potential options. Very, I mean, what's the situation with yourself and Dillian? Obviously, worked together for numerous fights throughout his career, etc. But moving forward now, is there still, if it's, if it's not the Joshua situation, is there still something there for Dillian? Yeah, always fight by fight. I mean, we want, we would be interested to make the AJ fight. Dillian would like a fight in between that. I'm just not sure what that fight is or what that fight looks like. You know. Um, but again, following next week's meetings, it's very likely we'll make an offer to Dillian White to fight Anthony Joshua. And if we don't, then we'll maybe look for another fight with him. But he was there on Saturday, he called out the Joe Joyce fight. Obviously, that's not there now. But, I don't know, Dubois taken. I'm not sure. You know, I just feel like we've just got to be careful not to just do these fights for the sake of it, you know? And when people say... You know, Joe Joyce said, I took the risk. I really rolled the dice there against Zhang. At no point did anyone think they were rolling the dice. They thought they had a good opponent in Zhang, that Joe would just do what he does, walk forward, grind him down. People watched the Jerry Forrest fight and said, he'll, he'll gas after seven or eight rounds. But it didn't work out that way. OK. Um, but, yeah, all in all... Uh, is he in that mix now, kind of Zhang now, yeah, like for potential he's, fights? He's, yeah, He's just won the interim world title. Yeah. He's banging the mix. I think Tyson Fury should probably fight Zhang. He's looking for an opponent. I mean, I think Bob mentioned about Andy Ruiz. Not sure Tyson Fury will be fighting Andy Ruiz. Maybe. I don't think so. Okay, just a... Two or three things more. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> Eddie, what is the situation regarding Conor Ben? Because you have said that news is imminent the week before last, etc. Conor Ben will be fighting in the Middle East or in America in June. We will make a decision this week in terms of where that will be. Are you still negotiating for the Chris Eubank fight? Yes. That would be your fight for the Middle East, correct? Correct. Who else are you negotiating with for him to fight in but America? We know about the Manny Pacquiao yeah, stuff. What is the situation with Pacquiao? They want the fight. The Sean Gibbons messaged me 462 times a day. Uh, our preference is to do a Eubank fight. We'll see what happens with that. Um, Pacquiao wants the fight. That would be a Middle East fight. And then we've got three or four options in America as well that we're looking at. But Conor Ben will fight in June. And... There'll be further details of that, hopefully, by the weekend. What is your understanding of the situation regarding Liam Smith? Because I think Liam Smith made some comments recently saying that, that 
the rematch with Chris Eubank Jr. was kind of back on track. This is about a week ago yeah, now. I mean, I'm, I'm, that's being discussed. Purely my own opinion, I do not believe that Liam Smith or Chris Eubank personally have deals in place at the moment for that fight. But again, I'm, listen, I think if we can't give Eubank the big fight, he'll take that fight, probably. Um, but obviously he wants a bigger fight. And if we can deliver that, it will be a much bigger fight. Has there been any situation that's changed regarding Conor Ben and the British Boxing Board of Control? No, only that we've asked, I've asked to have a meeting with the British Boxing Board of Control to discuss it. And I'll catch up with them this week. Obviously, we're in Cardiff, so I'm sure they'll... You can go to their gaff, can't you? I'm happy to. So, and have you had response to back saying that that's a possibility for you to do this week or...? Uh, not really, no. But we'll ask again this week. OK. All right, mate. Um, just coming back to that Tank and Garcia fight, live on the zone, um, who do you think actually wins this fight? I mean, look... I said Joyce would win within six rounds on Saturday. I did put that on social. It was a terrible. Move. But I think Javonta Davis wins the fight. But I give Ryan Garcia a lot more. No, no. No. I've changed my mind again. What, in the space of this interview? Yeah, just when I was about to say it then, because I've been, a lot of people I've been speaking to, Devin, Shakur, like all these people, they, they think Ryan has a really good chance in this fight. And the fact they grew up with him, and the fact they know Tank, for them to think that, they must, there must be substance to that, right? So, I started thinking that Ryan could win this fight by stoppage, and I actually would love to see that. I mean, I, I, love, I think they're both tremendous fighters. But I'm going to go by tank by stoppage. I've just changed my mind again. Tank by stoppage between rounds six to nine. I think it'll be quite cagey. Because I think Ryan's got power and I think Tank knows that. But I'm going to go round six to nine, tank by stoppage. Can't wait for this fight. Right, let's talk about June the 10th. Yeah. So... I know you've mentioned this London show about 50 million times, but not really kind of no, spoken, not, not really spoken million, about it. Yeah. Probably about half a dozen, but go on. Okay. But anyway, Ellie Scottney's rearranged IBF uh, world title fight with Shaneka Johnson. Otherwise known as Shaneka. Shaneka Johnson. Shaneka. Okay, anyway, it's on for 10th of June. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you acted right. pretty quickly on that. Yeah. Obviously, it was disappointment that May 20th is in the background now, but a couple of weeks on in London, uh, Ellie gets her world title shot, so delighted about that. I'll follow on from your June 10th conversation. Nina Smith against Shannon Courtney on that card. Do you mean Nina Hughes? Smith was her previous name, actually. <laughs> yeah, so how do you feel about that? Nina, <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying that, but anyway, Nina Hughes against Shannon Courtney. Um, great fight for the world bantamweight title. Um, I'll just say it anyway. Johnny Fisher will be in his first title fight over ten rounds so against. You'll find out soon. He's going to bang that place out. And what place is he actually banging out as well? We'll be in London. Could be at Wembley Arena. And it looks like Josh Warrington will headline that card. We're just finalising. We're called tonight actually to uh, to see. So yeah. Um, Chev Clark in a British title final eliminator, um, other championship fights. We're going to be a big card, but we'll that fight will that card will one hundred percent be announced this week. It's a tasty little card, to be fair. Really good card. We should start going back to Copper Box. Yeah, that's a really good venue. Yeah, really good crowd. The Copper Box is a great arena if you can yeah. fill it, but traditionally there haven't been fights big enough to fill it, and it looked busy on Saturday, so that was good, and it's a great arena when it's full. Okay, let's talk about Fabio Wardley. Were you in Ipswich this morning? I was, yeah. On the pitch? I was. Right, so obviously just been ordered to fight Fraser Clark. Yeah. Um, obviously you're going to go in on that hard, yeah. hard, hard? Yeah. It's a great fight. You know, it's, it's still a British title fight, but it's, I feel like it's a big heavyweight fight. Um, surprised that Fraser Clark um, was mandated for that fight, in all honesty. I mean, you've got Sol Dacre's English champion, you've got David Adelaide has been around a while. I feel like he got a little bit shafted there. Um, but Fraser, good fight, good fighter. I feel like it's a bit early for Fraser over 12 championship rounds, but he fancies it. We're in. Fabio's not vacating. 
So it's going to be a big purse bid. And congratulations to both fires because obviously the, the, the bidders are going to be aggressive, will bid in accordance with the value of the fight, but also will invest in Fabio Wardley. And both fighters are going to make a lot of money. But I'm assuming by you just didn't take a fanboy picture at no, Ipswich like to do, today. Yeah, we'd, we'd you love, want to do it there? We'd love to do it at Portman Road. And we've been in conversations with the club, Fabio has been for a while, about doing a fight there. We anticipated that fight, hap that moment happening in summer 2024. But yeah, we would love to do Fabio against Fraser at Portman Road. And obviously we're just getting our everything in order to, for the purse bid um, in a few weeks. Did you see the return of Prince Patel the other day, Eddie? I didn't see the fight, no, but I saw a few bits floating around. Yeah. He's got nothing for Prince Patel. He's always uh, on me to ask you about if there's anything you have for him in maybe two different weight divisions. Huh? Yeah, I think, look, I don't really know Prince Patel, but he certainly likes to cause a bit of controversy, doesn't he? And uh, I haven't watched him for a long time. I know he sort of took himself away and... I don't know how serious he is about fighting serious opposition, but if he is, yeah, open to that. Um, just a quick run of the shows in your next kind of few weeks before we finish off. So this Saturday, we have uh, Rakimov against Cordina, huge show in Cardiff, obviously for DAZN subscribers, on to Tank Garcia that night. May the 6th, uh, Guadalajara, undisputed super middleweight world championship, Canelo Alvarez against John Ryder. May the 20th, the small matter of Katie Taylor against Chantel Cameron um, for the undisputed like welterweight world championship. May 27th, Wood against Lara 2 in Manchester. Tickets on sale now. Catterall against Foley. Um, great card already for that. A couple of big domestic fights as well already announced. Um, Kieran Conway against Adofia, particularly final eliminator for the British title. Um, and then we go June 3rd, the possibility of a big show in the Middle East, which we'll look to confirm this week. June 10, the one I've talked about five million times in London. Looks like Josh Warrington headlining with Nina Hughes against Shannon Courtney, um, Ellie Scottney against Shanika Johnson, Chev Clark, and Johnny Fisher in his first title fight, big card. June 17th, it looks like we'll be in America. June 24th, we are in America for Edgar Belanga against Jay Quigley at Madison Square Gardens, Adam Kanaki, Reshat Matic, etc. a big card out there. And now we're moving on to July, which we're just starting to put in motion. So we hope that we can add an additional three, four, five announcements to the summer schedule for DAZN subscribers in the next week or so. What do you think about, um, sorry, just to finish off, what do you think about Jake Paul and Nate Diaz? Yeah, I like it, good bit of business. Good bit of business. Obviously, another big fight for DAZN. DAZN absolutely smashing it right now. And again, not just our stuff, but look at the zone schedule. It's on another level to anything else. Another level. Um, subscribers just get ticking up and up and up. Things are going great. And Jake Paul against Nate Diaz, another big moment for the platform. Right, Edward, thank you very much thank for you. your time. And uh, we'll you catch up with you in Cardiff this week. Few do not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shot up, Harry. And it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 